Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. <laughs> Who doesn't know about all the construction in Fargo Ward? Yes. The downtown Fargo Street Fair may be part of your summer tradition, but if you attend this weekend, be sure to bring your patience. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Due to construction on both sides of the river, your usual routes to the street fair may be impacted. The city of Fargo says it's encouraging people to look at other methods for getting to the 41st annual event. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with people about the routes they used on the first day of the street fair with success. Stay away from here because yeah. of the construction. The city of Fargo expects thousands of people to come out to the street fair. And if you do, you have to navigate well. We were just down here for dinner last night, so we kind of, you know, knew what to expect with the road closures and that. Lana Stefan and her children say they were lucky enough to find parking spot near Broadway. Well, we did. We kind of went around Broadway a little bit, and then we found a spot to about a block off, so it was perfect. Other street fair goers who park near downtown say they planned ahead for parking. We came early just because normally it's hard to find a parking spot. So we came early and we had our, <laughs> we talked yesterday. It's like, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Many of the people I spoke with say they're choosing to take the FM Link bus because it is free and also they don't have to deal with the stress of finding parking. You know, uh, park a mile away and walk in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every year for 30 years we've had to do this, you know. Yeah. So we finally decided to take the, we're getting old now, so we decided to take the bus. You know? The free Link FM bus added spots and expanded its hours for the fair. People just park at the Moorhead Center Mall and catch the bus over into Fargo. Another option people have is using the bike share program, parking near a station and riding. Many people say they didn't care what it took, they come to the annual event. Yeah, we were going to drive around because we come here every year. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. To see the full map with the Link FM bus route, free parking options, and construction areas, click on this story at valleynewslive.com. The street fair, by the way, closes at 9 tonight and tomorrow, and at 5 o'clock on Saturday. It opens each day at 10 in the morning. A burglary suspect who was believed to be in possession of a stolen firearm is in jail. Lucas Gilbertson was caught on surveillance video in a burglary that occurred in East Grand Forks. Authorities tried to speak with Gilbertson at his farm, but he fled the area, leading officers on a pursuit. He ended up running out of gas and then continued to flee on foot, where he was caught shortly after. A revolver and marijuana were found at the scene. Authorities were also able to find additional stolen property and drug paraphernalia at Gilbertson's farm. A woman has been arrested after making threats that caused an entire neighborhood to go into lockdown overnight. Police arrested 46-year-old Clydine Harrington for terrorizing and resisting arrest. Officers believe alcohol was a factor in the disturbance call. They came in around 9 last night. They say Harrington was threatening to shoot her neighbor and fire at police if they came to the house. After speaking with a woman and her family, police determined that there was no threat to the public. No one was hurt, and police say there were no weapons involved, despite the initial threat. Fargo police are sending out a warning after taking several reports of storage unit burglaries. Officers are recommending people invest in a stainless steel disc padlock to secure their unit, like the one you see on your screen. Police say the disc shape can stop the most common ways of forcing locks open, and they're cheap, too. The locks cost about 12 to 15 bucks. The rain and cooler temps are putting a damper on outdoor activities today. Let's head over to Justin in the Weather Center to find out tonight's forecast. Justin? And thank you, Andrea, and good evening, everybody. Uh, we saw rain moving through during the uh, early to late morning hours, and then it lasted throughout the day. We were also breezy and cool out there. Temperature of only 63 degrees right now in Fargo, 68 at Devil's Lake, 64 at Bemidji, and down toward Aberdeen and Watertown, both at 70. Also, we're still seeing that north or northwesterly wind uh, between 10 10 and 20 miles per hour across the area with higher gusts. Most of the rain is in portions of the Southern Valley right now as the Northern Valley is starting to see it taper off. But as you make your way from Fargo down out toward uh, Valley City, Breckenridge, you could see some light or even some moderate rain. And the rain does uh, last as you make your way into Lakes Country from Detroit Lakes to Fergus Falls and Elbow Lake. You're still seeing some uh, light rain showers out there. Good news for Fargo is it won't last much longer after the 
7 p.m. hour. Cloudy skies and temperatures falling into the lower 60s and upper 50s as we go through this evening. We do have some chances for some showers and storms as we go through the weekend, and then it gets really hot by next week. We'll have the details a little later on the newscast. Okay, thanks, Justin. Donald Trump is scheduled to reveal his pick for a vice presidential running mate tomorrow, but word is leaking out that the decision has been made. A GOP source confirms to CBS News that Indiana Governor Mike Pence will be Donald Trump's pick to be his vice presidential running mate. The decision comes just one day after Pence and Trump spent time together at his Indiana home. Pence is a virtual unknown to many voters. A poll shows 86% of those surveyed say they don't know enough about him to formulate an opinion. But Pence is seen as someone who can rally the conservative base. It'll keep the delegates at the convention happy because he's a social conservative, you know, he's a family man, and he's an economic conservative. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is also working to finalize who she will choose to be her vice presidential nominee. A special event is planned in Grand Forks tonight to confront the problem of sex trafficking. The Red Sand Project is designed to at least get a community conversation going to start addressing the problem. As Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, it's going to give the sidewalks of downtown Grand Forks an entirely new look. Sex trafficking is a major problem all over the country, including right here in the Valley. Just last month, 18 men in search of juvenile girls were arrested during a sexting operation in Fargo. UND professor Nikki Berg Buren has been part of a group studying the history of sex trafficking across North Dakota. Well, we don't have great statistics on it right now, but we do know it's bad. So we know that there are, you know, tens of thousands of personal ads placed online. It's uh, horrifying. I mean, the average age of entry into prostitution is 12 to 13 years old. So this is definitely uh, a horrifying problem that we need to address. Tonight at 7 p.m. here at Arbor Park on South 4th Street in downtown Grand Forks, a public event will be held. Everyone will receive a bag of red sand to spread between the cracks of sidewalks. The idea is to get a community conversation started regarding sex trafficking. Members of Youth Works out of Fargo will provide a few comments about the problem before everyone takes part in the Red Sand Project. So this is an organization that works with troubled youth and homeless youth, um, and we know that that population is especially susceptible to sex trafficking. So they'll be coming and saying a few remarks and telling us about the state of uh, the problem in North Dakota, and then we'll spread out around downtown Grand Forks and place the sand in the sidewalk cracks. We are not going to solve the problem tonight, but we're going to start conversations. That's why we're doing this. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. If you can't make it to tonight's event at 7 o'clock, you can still take part in the Red Sand Project. You can pick up your bag of red sand at their booth at this Saturday's Farmer's Market in downtown Grand Forks. We have breaking news now. Initial reports indicate dozens may be dead after a truck plowed into a group of pedestrians in uh, Nice, France, as people celebrated Bastille Day. Authorities say it appears a truck ran into a crowd watching a fireworks display. Photos and video are now emerging, showing crowds running from the scene. And pe uh, people say uh, several people were laying on the ground. CNN is reporting that police and the people in the truck exchanged gunfire. There's no word on whether or not this was a coordinated attack, but people are being told to stay in their homes. And we'll update this breaking story as more information is available. In tonight's schemes and ripoffs, there's a new scam targeting people with college loans. The Better Business Bureau says the scam offers loan forgiveness for current and former college students, suggesting student loans might be eligible for forgiveness. The BBB is warning people that anyone who says to you that those loans can be forgiven quickly and easily is lying. It's not clear yet what company is ultimately behind this offer. Carson Wentz's popularity has skyrocketed, but he says he feels like the same small-town North Dakota kid he always was. Nearly 400 Wentz fans got the chance to meet the new Eagles quarterback last night, thanks to a contest with Shields. Thousands of people entered the contest, which Wentz says is humbling. It's kind of weird, you know. It's 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 cool and it's a it's a great thing, but um, I still feel like the same the same kid that grew up in the, um, in Bismarck. So. Um, but it's also really cool to, to have those experiences. 
The former Bison quarterback told the Bison and now Eagles fans that he hopes he's making North Dakota proud and that, and that earned him a loud applause. Wentz will report to training camp in Philadelphia July 24th with his first practice on the 25th. Valley News Live is headed to training camp with Carson as well, so watch for our special coverage later this month. Boots are filling up with donations to help send kids off to camp. As we told you yesterday, firefighters will be out through tomorrow to help raise money for kids with muscular dystrophy. Today, we got to talk with one camper who said they're all thankful for all the activities they get to do. It's one of the things I look forward to since I was seven, and I've been going there for, what, nine years now? So I'll keep going until they say that I can't come anymore. You can help by donating at any of the seven Fargo-Moorhead Hornbachers locations. Firefighters will be out from noon until 8 p.m.